Hi everyone. This web series is being made to give an overview of nanotechnology and sensitize and motivate the people and the youth who are working and aspire to work on nanotechnology. They can be from any field, any engineering or science area, but they can get into nanotechnology. That's what I'm going to emphasize this. For any kind of application, it can be health, energy, environment, and agriculture. So I'm going to take you to how this can be done with the, the fundamental concepts of nanotechnology and connect it to the engineering and science areas. This is being made to give an overview of nanotechnology to people, students, teachers, and scientists who are working in the area of nanotechnology. And whichever area they work, whether it's engineering or science field, how to connect them to nanotechnology, that's what I'm going to emphasize in this episode and rest of the web series. I can assure you all that there is a tremendous and great potential for nanotechnology in various areas of applications. Uh, usually nanotechnology deals with the materials with the dimensions in the nanoscale. And when I say nanoscale, it means it is less than, it is defined as material with dimensions of less than 100 nanometer is called nanoscale. It can be any dimension, it need not be in three dimensions. For example, a particle with three dimensions, it's a nano dot or quantum dot is called a nanoparticle. Or a wire, it can be any long, but only diameter can be nano like carbon nanofiber or carbon nanotube. And it can be a film or a flake that can have only thickness of nanometer and that also can be, can be called a nanomaterial. And if you talk about mechanical components for engineering people and the component having the grain within the component, if that is in the nano scale, then also it is called nano grained component material. For example, a connecting rod in electric vehicle or automotive vehicle. So this is what nano scale means. And any material that comes in the nano scale, it starts showing tremendous different properties and then those properties should be exploited to get into a particular kind of application. This information can tell us how anyone working in any field can adopt nanotechnology. A person working in the chemistry, physics, mechanical, metallurgical, chemical engineering, our agriculture sciences, biomedical, and electronics. Anyone can connect to nanotechnology. Only thing, they need to know the fundamental concepts of their own fields, and then how and the basic principles of nanotechnology can be connected to their fundamental properties. If that is known, it is not difficult, and it is very easy to adopt nanotechnology. For example, you take myself. I am a chemist by profession. And I did my PhD in photoelectrochemistry and moved to diamond thin film technology in Japan, University of Tokyo when I was working on the field. And later, I moved to nanotechnology when I came back to India in 2003 and started this work. And I worked with nano silver, nano titan dioxide for antibacterial and photocatalytic self-cleaning applications in the area of textiles. And as a result, we got two inventions, two patents, and transferred this technology to a Indian industry. And today, these antibacterial and self-cleaning textile products and garments are available in Indian market, and you can go and then buy from the shops. If it's a Wrangler or flying machine, color plus, all these are available in the market. Today, from silver and titania, I have changed my field to the nanomaterials for energy applications. I work on the area of lithium-ion batteries and supercapacitors for electric vehicle applications. And of course, the materials what used in those devices and components are nanomaterials. The materials in the form of electrodes, which are used in these devices, battery, lithium-ion batteries and supercapacitors, if they are nanomaterials, the performance of the devices goes very high. For example, an electric car, if the acceleration has to be high, then the nanometer what is used in the electrode will influence the acceleration in the form of, we call it C rates, or power delivery rates, or charging rates. So this is how it influences. And a researcher uh, who is working in this nanotechnology field should understand uh, that 
the area what they are going to work should be India specific and India relevant so that the technology what is coming out of his invention will make a big difference to the country and what is there in advanced countries need not be directly adaptable to the Indian conditions and what you need to develop like what we are doing should be uh, adaptable to Indian conditions. The lithium-ion battery and super cars, what we are working is directly relevant to the National Electric Mobility Mission Plan uh, which is uh, uh, ambitious uh, to introduce uh, electric vehicles in this country in next uh, one or two decades. For example, a material what is well known for electric vehicle batteries, lithium ion batteries, this is called lithium ion phosphate and the material as such is not an electrically conducting. Please remember for a battery electrode, the material should be electronically and electrically conducting. And since lithium ion phosphate, though it is known that it is a good material for electrode, but it could not be used until 1990s because of its low conductivity. And when the nanotechnology came into picture, then people started making the lithium ion phosphate into nanoparticles and coat with the conducting carbon and use this coated lithium ion phosphate particles for the electrode materials. As a result, because of the small particle size, the electron what is generated in the particle will diffuse very fast to the surface because the diffusion length what it requires is on par with the uh, dimensions of the nanoparticle. So it easily reaches the surface where the conducting carbon is already there which picks up the electron and gives to the current collector. So if there is no nanotechnology and it could not have been possible and this could not have been realized. So a lot of particles then from that concept a lot of nanomaterials used in electric devices intentionally they are made into nanoparticles and nanomaterials and the performance of the batteries are being improved tremendously time to time. In next part of this web series, I am going to uh, let you know and sensitize that how a person working in each area and the field can directly connect to the nanotechnology with giving specific examples so that you can quickly understand and then uh, appreciate it.